This podcast was brought to you by our sponsor, Dragon Shield. If you want to check out any cool Dragon Shield product, you can do that at the affiliate link down below to help support the channel. Perfect. I said that perfectly. Welcome to a Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan. And this week, we're going to be talking all about the colors that you see played in CEDH. Guess what? That's all five of them. White, blue, black, red, green. Was that Wooburg was order? That pretty good? Yeah, that oh sounds yeah, like it. Of course it was. Hell yeah. <laughs> so basically what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be going through all of the colors of Magic and we're going to be talking about what they do inside of CEDH, what these colors bring to your deck's color pie and how good they are at specific things that we're looking for in CEDH cards to fill up our 99. Yeah, what each color offers in CEDH. I love this topic. I think each color offers different things than a lot of what they do in other formats because a lot of these cards weren't really designed for cdh i mean i guess at this point now a lot of them really realistically were. some of them are but, but. a significantly <laughs> smaller percentage of the cards that we're going to be talking about are designed for CEDH yeah. versus actual right. other formats. And all the slices of the color pies are all a little bit different. In 1v1 in 60 card, Mono Red has burn, but in CDH we don't really burn. So Mono Red has to explore that design space in a little bit of a different way, which right. is kind of cool. Mono White does like go wide with small creatures, which again doesn't really work in CEDH, but we've seen a lot of different ways that uh, Wizards is willing to bend the color pie for white a little bit more to help it in some of these categories now, which is really nice. So, uh, what are the colors? We already said the colors. We said them. They know them. If you're watching this channel, you know the colors. You know the White, colors. Blue, black, red, green. So, the categories that we're looking to evaluate these colors in are as follows. Mana. How good they are at producing mana. How good they are at drawing cards. How good they are at interacting with your opponent in some sort of way. How good are the win conditions that the colors bring to your deck? And what stacks pieces are available in these colors as well? Yeah, this is basically the categories of CDH. Every card in CDH falls under one of these categories, mostly, I would say. Yeah. You could argue that stacks and interaction is like part of the same category, maybe, but they operate a little bit differently. Stacks is proactive. Uh, interaction is reactive. So there's two sides of a similar coin, I would say. I keep on hitting this. Yeah, you knocked. You well, I was talking, right so it doesn't it. matter when I, I hit it when I'm talking. I guess it's true, but now... Now, like my angle well, now, way yeah, off. you're just gonna be off the whole time <laughs> is that good there we go okay this is how i'm gonna look for the rest of the podcast it's the same as before i think so okay all right cool great so do you want to go in wooborg order or? i think we should all right i think let's start with out one. of respect for the magic community i think we'll yeah, go in i think mark order. rosewater who's obviously watching would appreciate that you're welcome marky mark <laughs> um all think, right don't call him that <laughs> All right, so uh, the first color that we're going to talk about is white in that case then. Now, white is an interesting color. White is actually one of my favorite colors in Magic in really? 60 cards. Oh, that's I didn't, um, know, that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew you were a Sun Titan guy, but I didn't know you were a white f favorite. Yeah, I really do like white, um, but... Uh, again, white, the axis has to fight on in CEDH is much different than in 60 card. Yes. But I'm really getting a newfound love for the white cards that we are playing in CEDH now. Yeah, dude. So when I think of white, I think of two things. I think of white cards primarily giving me powerful stacks pieces that are going to interact with the board and i think of them as uh, a great protection color definitely too. yes because stuff like silence grand abolisher even flame scroll celebrant is kind of a whitish card that's a boros card but in whites to be able to use it those type of effects are really powerful in cdh because you have multiple opponents so being able to shut off multiple opponents with one card is a lot better than counter spells in certain situations um these cards are not nearly as powerful in one v1 because more often than not if you can have that extra protection it would best just be a counter spell because sometimes you may not need to use it. it takes a lot of extra time to deploy there's a couple other reasons why in 1v1 those effects are less good and there's two less players right yeah that's the main one the <laughs> yeah. multiplayer aspect is like the number one reason why that effect is so good in, uh, in cdh and the stacks pieces are also extremely important because certain decks who don't have access to blue who don't have access to that on the stack interaction needs some way to do something important in the game you know what i mean like yeah. if you're not 
not countering spells, you're just gonna die very quickly. So you have to do something to slow your opponents down, and white is really good with that. Especially recently, cards like, ooh, what's the bird? The bird, the bird, the Archon two three. Of Archon Amiria. of Amiria. Not even a bird, I don't think, but Archon of Amiria is an no, incredible- No, aren't birds. They all have birds in the art because they're all riding the Archon. Is that what the it Archon is? Archon itself is the knight. Oh, I thought Archons were like a griffin or something. I thought it was like a, they a all bird have lion or the, something. The bird or the lion or something like to they honest, all have like a griffin, but they would be griffins if that was the case. That's I'm pretty true. sure the Archon I don't is know that the I knight ever realized that, that <laughs> rides it. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, that's the th kind of things that White offers, and White does offer that thing to Eternal formats. I think a lot of the time, I Legacy agree. decks like um, I mean, Death, um, and Death and Taxes isn't really right? a deck as much anymore, but there are you know mono white decks up to recently were very popular until the initiative card got banned. But when mono white is powerful in Eternal formats, it is because of cards like Thalia, which is also very good in CDH. Yeah. Things that can stacks out your opponent uh, and then beat with like creature damage, which White is still okay at. I mean, it has yeah. cards like Elish Norn that allow you to beat face, but I would say a lot of White's things, like big size isn't really what White's known for. Going no. wide is not really what White's known for in CDH. Yeah, right? so it's gonna probably make our rating for its win conditions be pretty low. I would like, say so. Elish Norn is a fine win condition in very specific decks, but outside of that, like yeah i guess savine's reclamation helps you set up a line oh sure but i don't think that's going to be enough to really elevate like what we're going to rate this on so yeah. by the way our scale that we're going to put for each one of these categories is one through five with Got one it. being this color is bad at this thing and five being this color does this like the best it's okay. great should so, we run through those now as, as how we're talking about these colors because we don't have to spend too much time talking about every single white card no, right? right yeah okay. i mean we, we can talk about more white cards let's if we want, let's but. start at the top of your list it was mana first right? mana is the first one okay white gives you no mana i would say zero if possible if well, we can give this a zero rating because white is what? one to five so i know I that's give... what i'm asking i'm requesting oh. can we do zero on this one because i don't think white offers anything in terms of mana production in cdh whatsoever um no not right nothing that's outside of the norm because land I don't taxes wanna... is a card but doesn't see playing no, cdh that's really like, that's card draw i would put not land even, tax not the even card mana draw, actually yeah, yeah. Uh, what's so there's there's two cards that it has. It has restoration of a Django. Okay, um, kind and, of. Yeah, kind of. And then it also has Cartographer's Map. Is that the name of the card? Sure. But these are three mana cards that are do see some play in mono white decks, I suppose. But if you're in mono white sacks, but the whole point of this is that like we want to. We want to talk about the colors as you're adding them to your deck and right. not necessarily like as a color on its own. Right. This isn't really evaluating this as like a mono white option because yeah. if that's that that it still makes it a not good card. It's just a not good card that you have to play. So like like you said, we're talking about what white would add to your deck of conglomerating colors. So you're thinking of a deck, I want white for this, I want black for this, I want red for this, whatever. Yeah. When you're making that deck in your head, trying to find a commander that fits the colors that you want, these are the things that the colors will offer. And for white, mana production, big fat goose egg for me. Big I guess we can egg. give it a one if you want to give it a one. But Well, we are going to give it a one because okay. it's the lowest. Maybe well, well, we decide the rules. So we it, can, the, yeah. You know what? Yeah, it gets a big fat zero because we're going to add Because it doesn't up. really offer anything to a, a no, deck in really terms doesn't. of mana production, yeah. right? Like I can't, the two cards that you mentioned are cards that are playable, but I think they'll get cut immediately as soon as you add a second color. Once you add another color. Yeah, exactly. And what we're going to do is we're going to add up all of the points. And this is scientifically how we're going to determine the best color in CEDH. Understood. By okay. the way, yeah. that's the goal. Of and this. it'll be unfallible. Yes, exactly. So card draw in one white we're getting there we're actually at a decent spot honestly we're, there are some white cards that offer real card advantage to almost any deck esper sentinel Big is one. one is like now in every single white deck truly the card is incredible it is most yeah. often an ancestral recall and sometimes much more than that is that the name of that card uh yes it is ancestral sometimes i get ancestral visions visions and that mix up in ancestral my head ancestral visions has what's AK? Um, a AK, AK is the one where you draw for each other ancestral one. Ancestral knowledge? No, it's something else. It's where you draw for each other one that you have of it in your graveyard. Yeah, isn't that something like that? It's it's like a two mana It's knowledge, clock. but it's not ancestral. It's, it's knowledge of, I don't associated. know. It's, it's this card. <laughs> It's, oh, Sorry, yes, I'm getting it's over here. It's I'm getting this card. White offers real card advantage. Now. Yes. Uh, Esper Sentinel. There was another card I was thinking of, too. Give it to me. Uh, Timna. 
Timna is technically we're in white. counting Timna because yeah. it's a reason to be in white at right. this point now, right? That's how we're evaluating these colors. Even though you also colors. have to be in black, it's still, you're it in white. It still gives it to white. It's a reason to be in white. Yeah, and I think it's more of a draw to white than it is to black, actually, because Definitely. Timna synergizes better with the white creatures versus what black tends to do. That's kind of true. Yeah, I would say I, that's kind of true. That's, there's, that's, there's more good white creatures than there are yeah, black creatures right, right now. That that's two cards that we just named for white and card draw. Archivist of Agma, another great one. Oh recently. my god, I almost forgot about Archivist of Agma, those, but I love that card. Those three cards are like all realistically oh, very great. good card advantage in white right now. Okay, so that's like the same amount of ones that blue will have, which is weird, times. right? Because a lot of the blue card advantage spells, like Ponder, Preordain, Dig Through Time, things from yeah. other formats, we don't, we can play them. We don't really play them in our format. Things like Mystic Mora and Ristic Study are great versions of card draw and blue, mm -hmm. but there isn't a ton of other things besides that, which is weird. I mean, if we count Timnif for white, we count Krom for blue, blue. and exactly. that's a reason. That's true. I've decided that I think I want to give white a three. For card draw. I think that's great. It has three good card advantage things. I keep on hitting this thing. He, he, I, hitting I, I, I don't know. It's I okay. Cannot. I can scooch and like we can push that over more maybe. Let's try um, this. Yeah, let's try this. Okay. I think you look better the other way though. Who cares how I look? <laughs> it's about it's about what we're it's about the colors. <laughs> All right, let's move on. It's about the colors. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think what what also holds White's card draw options back is that a lot of them don't synergize with the same stacks pieces that you want. Esper Sentinel will always be paid for when you have a rule of law effect out, yep. and if you have an Aven Mind Sensor in play, nobody's going to be fetching for your Archivist of Agma to draw. That is true. Yes, yeah, some of your inherent cards don't synergize well together, whereas is what I would say for blue cards that is the opposite because Ristic Study will draw you cards and those cards could be counter spells to stop the very thing that drew you the card. Exactly. That's but, a great synergy. But it is your deck, right? So you can always hold on to your Aven Mind Sensor if you do have a Archivist of Agma in right. play or vice versa. And even if you do have both with those, yes, the Aven Mind Sensor does prevent, but if you get them with an Aven Mind Sensor after the Archivist Augment's play oh, that's and they great. do search their top four, you still get that draw. So yeah. it's not like it completely stops it. And even Opposition Agent, searching of the library is still happening. So you do, do get that draw also, which is, although Opposition Agent is a black card, it's, it's still... They, they just won't cast the spell is, is normally right. what, what will right. happen there. So it's kind of like a, like a soft lock, if you will. Um, so moving on to Interaction. Um, White White's interaction is Silence, Grand Abolisher, and Ranger Captain of Eos. I would say Swords to Plowshare is Ooh, still probably yes, the is. best creature removal we have in our format. I totally agree, and I will still play that card in like every white deck that Almost I build. Almost certainly, yeah. yeah. But I do, not having counterspells is a flaw, and not having a, a deep amount of interaction. You have Silence, you have Swords to Plowshare, that's kind of it. Blue's interaction is very deep. You have right. a ton. I have a question. Give it to me. The new White Remand that's coming out in the Lord of the Rings set. Ooh. How do you think that will affect this mm. White Tricky. interaction package? It's just Remand. It's exactly Remand. Yeah. Remand sees no play. But Remand's blue, and if you're in blue, you got a ton of other options. If you're not in blue and you are in White... That card seems like it's pretty good. It, it could have some implications here. If you're I, in a rule of law deck, it's pretty good. They can't cast it again. Right? You time walk them completely. And Actually, draw a card that's every a really time. good point. Yeah. yeah. And most often, like in the early turns, they're going to be like kind of tapping out to do their spells that are worth countering. So you are going to still be able to time walk them. I mean, we know why Remand is good, but. Maybe. But it, it, it could be even extra good in a color that doesn't normally have access to an effect like this. Yeah, definitely. I'm willing to give white a three for interaction here, too, because hmm. it doesn't have a ton. Uh, you know what? Maybe. What are you thinking? Because you just said, hmm, and uh, maybe it made me think yeah. it should be a four. I would say, oh, a four. I was going to go lower. I was going to say maybe you a two. Lower. It does have silence and swords, though, are strong, but it doesn't have a ton of things. I think its lack of depth is what holds it back. So I think it has the second most. Second most. The interaction. second most interaction, yeah. Blue is definitely the most... Maybe followed by so let's like, think think I about would say, think about it like if you're if you're playing like a five color deck yeah like what of the best of the interaction are you playing like white's interaction is gonna come in second place because you have a little bit more ranger captain of eos and silence can both be used on opponents turns okay so not only can they provide you with protection for your win they can also interrupt your opponent's wins swords to plowshares picks off every single pesky creature that 
that you have to deal with. I would say red, black, and green's interaction in CDH is really only protective for the most part. That's not exactly true. It's 90% true. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess white, yeah, I guess white is the second best interactive color in yeah. CDH. That sounds weird to say, but I think it is. Like what, what, what sort of interaction are you missing in white? So white just like doesn't have counter spells. Nobody like has. Red has deflecting swat, red elemental blast, uh, power okay. blast, which kind of acts as counter spells. More, Green yeah. has autumn of the veil. That's not the with card's name. Autumn of the veil and summer of the veil. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, veil of Summer and Autumn. What is it? Veil of Autumn? Autumn's Veil. Autumn's Veil. God, yeah. it's fucking cards. It's okay. The next one is going to be Winter's Cover Underneath the Veil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at least green and red have interaction on the stack. Black has none really on the stack. And white's interaction is more preventative. Ooh, white has that split second card that you got blown Angel's out Angel's Grace. I did yep. recently get blown out by an Angel's Grace with my Thassa's Oracle. Yeah. Still All right, so like that's kind of another one. I'm okay. still... So do we give it a four? Uh, I think it's either a three or four were you originally going to give it a two i was thinking two then let's stay on three let's we do can three. split the difference i think three then, is good yeah i think we'll do three, three is good wind conditions how do you feel about white's wind conditions we got heliad ballista yeah we, we got, got elish norn you're gonna put us both on the screen at the same time i probably will i know I you probably will, will. Oh, that's funny <laughs> um what else do we got nothing really no that's like pretty if much i'm it. racking my brain we got a savine's reclamation for your intuition line that's yeah. a reason to splash white into like your grixis deck yeah it's that's really something just these that's in, that intuition line is our second best one card win con if you'll you'll know if you watched our last podcast right that's very true actually so yeah. that is something to consider when we're talking about winning conditions it's the main reason why i have such a hard time playing grixis deck because every time i think damn i wish i could play savine's reclamation in silence that's huge uh, yeah right that's part of the reason why i thought silence should bump up white to four but it's okay um yeah the Rich, win we might go back we might go back and we'll change go back that. We we, might go we'll, back. we'll do a review for winning um, conditions i'm feeling strong in a three I'm I'm feeling white at a two. You're feeling it at a two. Yeah, because like right. you can still do a lot of good stuff for like without white with your win conditions. Like yeah. when I'm looking to add white to a deck with uh, with other colors, I I'm not thinking of it for the win conditions. Yeah, Savine's Reclamation is the only one that goes towards win conditions for the most part. Helia Ballista and Elshorn are very specific, yeah. and I think that's kind of it. So I'm yeah I'm comfortable with the two. I'm there. comfortable with in the our two arbitrary as well. imaginary world of these numbers mattering and yeah. making a difference. I would say yeah. I it might be a one actually because if zero is a number that we could have i thought we didn't do zero as a number but we put zero for mana you were very adamant about having mana at zero for this i don't remember that thing because we exactly. couldn't you said we make the rules <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what do you think it should be? Well, we'll keep it at two. All it's right, fine. we'll keep it at two. Yeah. All right, and then stacks is the last one. This one, it's very strong. It's, it's a five. A, it's a five, this easily. It's a clear five. Dranith yeah. Magistrate, uh, Archon of Amiria, Sanctum Prelight, Thalia. There are a ton. It's the main draw to this All the color. best ones. It's yeah. The best, it's the best. All the best ones. I would say it's the main draw to white. It's the main reason to want to play right. It's the main thing that white does very well. It's these stacks pieces that you can hopefully play around or are, ooh, what's it called when it's only one-sided? That's a term. Oh, yeah, it is. It's um, symmetric. Asymmetrical. Symmetrical. That's what it is. Yes. Yes. Um, it's got a lot of that, which is great. So easily stacks is a five on white. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to blue because in Woo Bird Ooh. Order, that's the Ooh. next one. You. Yes. Mana. What does blue offer in mana? High tide? High tide. Which is only mono blue and not a thing that really realistically it offers to yeah, you. Yeah, right? really. It's more, it's more like... You should remove other colors so that you can get mana in blue. Yeah, I would say... Are there any other, like, blue-specific rocks that you would get? No, I mean, like, I, I guess technically, like, um, Talisman of Demir, whatever that one is, uh, Dominance. Oh, yeah, actually, that's That's, like, true. the most yeah. played talisman yeah i don't know if that's true. really every like a draw to I blue play, though that's like you have to play it no that's that's a every time i'm playing a four color blue deck that's the i make play. sure that the talismans that i'm playing are the blue ones that's true because you need your blue ones to cast spells but i don't know is that a draw for blue i don't think that's a draw for blue no. i think that's just a deck building situation yeah you want your talismans to which tap is for why blue. i'm playing the blue ones more um i think blue is also at a zero for mana Hmm. Like I think or, so. There is nothing about white for mana whatsoever, but we did talk about something. We for talked blue. about we talked two about the white talisman. cards. So, oh uh, yeah, but we they don't see play in in multicolor decks. That's the exact scenario we're talking about for high tide. That we're high talking tide, about yes. one high card. Tide, yes, but the talisman I think is an actual argument. Although it's small and tiny, you do play the blue talismans. But you would play the white talismans in non-blue decks. That's you wouldn't really. Hmm. 
right? Like, I almost feel like they shouldn't be included okay. because all colors have access to that. Okay. Like, if there's, like, any other specific mana that you can get, like, like ri- we're looking what for, like, rituals or snap. other, like... Cards like Snap, you can untap your guy's cradle. Frantic Search, you can untap an Ancient Tomb and stuff like that. That is card advan- that is man advantage in blue. Good Definitely. thinking. Yes. Good thinking, Dylan. I yes. really like that. Okay. That is a reason to play Snap is because you're in Guy's Cradle deck. Yep. Or you're in a deck that has multiple soul lands or something like that. I why did I take uh why did I put March of Swirling Mist in Thrasios Brews? I should put Snap back in. You could put Snap back in. I didn't in. even think you can about get some that extra again. Yeah. activation. It doesn't come up a ton, but when it does, it's very good. I mean, like using it to bounce dock side too. Oh, That's boy. really good. Okay, I'm willing to give bounce spells on your own dock side is an all the reason to play blue that is mad advantage. It's blue and red, but a reason to play blue in your dockside deck is to play extra bounce spells so you okay. can occasionally bounce your own dockside and make extra mana yeah that's that's pretty good okay i so think where blue are you might at? be a two all that's right, a I'll, one that's one two we just thought all right, i'll give you a two yeah i think blue because is a two. we are looking at it amongst all colors and all when you colors, have the you can option build anything to... that you want what does that color bring to the table should we include that soul partition then also works very well with dockside in white should and white like have a w- work really well if you're playing the spell secret line? I'm already. gonna give white a we'll give one, one for mana, we're it up to and one. now we're not doing zeros. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel like zero should be an option though, but we now have a reason to get we rid of it. We now have a reason to get rid of it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, card draw in blue. This is oh, see. Initially, my gut reaction is very, very good, it's, but when I think about it, I'm actually not sure that that's true anymore. So let's go over all of the cards that draw cards. Uh, you have Mystic Remora and Ristic Study that are in all of the decks. Arguably the best card draw we have in the format. Yes. And that's really where it ends. Quality, high. Yes. Now we move on to some things that we're still happy to have, but less excited to have than those two things. Ponder, Preordain, any of the blue cantrips. Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder. That's, I mean, kind of card advantage. Card selection. I, if I, you use your graveyard. It's an advantage piece. Like, yeah. like this should, that's how I look at it is that card I'm advantage. still going to just see more cards and fuel. It like certainly is card advantage. Yeah. yeah. I'm higher on that card and I put it in more decks than I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Maybe the new one that's coming out, the championship card that whenever, whenever someone else draws their second card that's in the a one. turn, that you might be draw good. a card. That might be a good one. That might be a good one. Horse fish. Uh, the horse fish that lets you draw whenever you cast a spell on someone else's turn. Archmage <laughs> of Emeritus. Short, very, it's very um, specific decks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Krom, if we're all counting Timna for white, we should count Krom. Well, as I a would, blue, yeah, kind of. Uh, good transition into the other commanders that also draw cards. Right. Like basically every single blue commander. A lot of the that blue ones draw play. cards. Thrasios, Yuriko. There's a lot of blue commanders that draw cards, and yeah. that is a reason to want to be in blue. You can probably pick a commander that can draw you some cards. Definitely. Yeah. I would even say like Urza counts for that too. I could say that as well. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that's another reason why man is in blue in, in two too. Um, kind of specific. Yeah, but maybe it's not really. Um, so where are you at with card draw? I still think, based on everything that we talked about, I'm still comfortable giving blue a between like a four and a five for card draw. I think four. You think four? I think four. So what? The only reason I think four is because I, when we get to black, I think I'll give black a five, and I think it's got to be one for each. You know what I mean? One of them is the fifth best, the fourth best, the third yeah, best. Yeah, but we're going to talk about more we more blue cards that are going to give you a card event. I don't know. Maybe we're not. I maybe don't know. We're not. Maybe we we're can... not. There's four or five black ones that give you an insane amount of card advantage. We can. Maybe black's not better card advantage. We can give them the same number. That's true. That's also true. Before we talk about black, I'm okay giving blue a five. But depending on how our conversation goes when we move on to our next color, maybe we'll want to reevaluate. We'll back. Okay. Yeah. I think I think as we talk more about what we're looking for, we'll kind of have a better understanding. All right. Um, for interaction, well, blue gets a five for interaction. I would say almost yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. That, that's that's the main. That's the main thing. Sorry. Between balance and counter spells, that's really what you're looking for. Get things out of play. Stop things from coming into play. Yeah, those are the main things that blue offers. I think that's the main thing. The main thing that white offers is those stacks pieces. The main thing that blue offers is counter spells. Counter spells are really bo- broken. They're really good. They allow you to only react when you need to react. They allow you to double as protection for your own thing as well as ways to stop your opponent's things. They do a lot of different stuff, uh, and they're not necessary to deploy early. So you can hold on to your cards. Holding on to that information is really valuable. Counter spells are good. That just and they're even more good in multiplayer than they are in one v one. I think uh, because you. You are you can only react you can react when you want to react yes that, that instant speed obviously is super important exactly 
Um, so yeah, I would I would put interaction as a five for blue. Me too. I would definitely do that. And for win conditions, I also think this number is pretty high. You Thassa's yeah. Oracle, Brain Freeze. Yeah, that's true. That Thassa's Oracle and Brain Freeze are the big ones. Uh Scepter. The Scepter combo I guess he forces you to be in blue. Not really a reason anymore, I don't think. I don't really like choose to play Scepter if I don't have to. No, but it's an option that you have yeah. that other colors don't have. That's true. Yeah. But I don't it's not a reason to play blue, I don't think. It's like, okay, I have to play this because my commander No no. No, but I, I guess what I mean is just that, like, you have more combos that are available to you. Yeah, that's true. That, yeah, yeah. Holebreaker Horror and two other stuff. Right, yeah. There, there's, there's just more. Basically, every single good combo branches into blue at some point. That's true. Every combo, every color can combo in their own mono color, but those are a lot of those are very limited whereas like once you do start to branch out like a lot of the the better ones are in blue so do we give it uh four or five do you think i'm thinking maybe four i think four too for that one as well it's yeah i guess that's it should be five yeah i, I guess that's it has the best one it has the best win condition yeah and the intuition that's true. one of the best and, setup lines and, and um and brain freeze like brain we freeze, said yeah too. It's, yeah i think it's gotta be okay yeah that will be a five and then stacks how do you feel about blue stacks not really nothing to speak of i would say there's no, no onboard uh interaction risk study mystic remora should be more like treated more like stacks pieces most of the time probably yeah, yeah i would say stacks stacks is not what brings you to blue we'll give it a one We'll give it we'll a give one. We'll give it a one, yeah. So this actually gives Blue three of the five categories with perfect fives. That makes sense. Them, which I think does make sense. Blue is the best color in Magic and also in CDH. So. Yeah, because of the things that we mentioned already. They're like heavily things that you're looking for. Right. So I'm, I'm not surprised to see this. Moving on to black then. Black for mana. Very good. You turned me on to this a little bit yeah. more when we were talking about the initial idea of this podcast. Yeah. There are a lot more mana options in black than I thought that there There's were. There's a ton. Dark Ritual. There's uh, Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Calling the Week. Yep, Calling the Week. There's uh, also things like... Uh, if you're interested, there's like some specific ones like a Song of the Damned and uh, Reign of Filth can also be a very powerful Ooh, yeah, one. Yeah, Reign of Filth. If you go into other colors, then too, you have access to Choline Ritual and uh, Mana Morphos as well. Which Mana sometimes Morphos you is can a, make as a red green card and not black. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Um, but there so are not there are morphos, but, but there are a lot. There's a good grip. There's a good hand fill. Uh, I would say dark ritual being the main one. Obviously, yeah. is, a, is a big reason to play black. You normally look to it very quickly. Um, also, things like elves of the deep shadow is interesting. If you're already playing green and you put in black in your deck, you get an extra mana dork, which yeah. is very important since we can't play four of any one particular one. Does that make white better because you also have Avison's Pilgrim? It's so a, it has, you know what? Avison's Pilgrim is a reason, but we can't put it to two. Just Avison's Pilgrim, it's the worst but it strengthens one. its number one. Elves of Deep Shadow, even though you lose life, is so much oh, better so. than Avacyn's Pilgrim. Yeah, definitely. Because the black spells are good and white spells are bad. So when you have to cast a, use a white man, you're like, oh, God, this sucks. Yeah, you exactly. Like, oh, at least I'm playing this good spell because I have to take one mana, make, take a damage to make this black mana. Exactly, yes. All right, so black, where do you want to put black in mana? Like a four, probably. I'd, I would say a four. I would think it's either a three or a four. Yeah. Black is really fast. I would. I. Th I think I'm. I'm fine with saying that it gets a four. Yeah. Because it, it, speed is certainly something that it does not lack, and that's all because of these rituals that you have. I think the fastest. I mean, it has the fastest rituals, right? It has the best fast mana in the format. So it's got to be at least a four, maybe a yeah, five. That's true. Um, I don't know why I always thought that red does, but I think I just get just stuck in does. modern for yeah. some reason, where like. Yeah, does red, red does. does. Red make mana in modern? Uh, like the old storm decks, like oh, when sure, I was sure, in the modern, sure. like yeah, the yeah, yeah. piratic rituals yeah, and like dumb shit like yeah. that. Yeah, and but the, that same deck exists in Legacy and it uses dark rituals. It's way, way, way it's better. So <laughs> much better, right? Yeah, tendrils of agony is so, so much, much better, better than grape, grape shot. shot. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so card draw then is the next one, and because of peer into the abyss, ad nauseum, necropotens, and bolus to citadel, citadel. I think this is a five. I would say very high. Those cards are extremely strong. Those are the big yeah. card draws of our format. That's the Sphinx's Revelation. It's an ad nauseum. Yeah. Normally, some formats have you know some deck that can utilize some big card draw effect. In our format, it's this. Uh, you look very surprised. What did tutors you realize? isn't one of the categories. How is tutors not one of these categories? Oh yeah, because this is that's really that's what white brings. Is that's uh, do we talk? Yeah, okay. Slap on tutors there. Yeah, so we're is slapping tutors on a whole other category. It's not yeah, a card it's, advantage. No, it's a whole other it's category not. because like 
what card advantage does is put more cards into your hand and what a tutor specifically does is take one specific card and put it into your hand yeah black gets a five for the tutors because that's really where you are that's the main thing that black gives you demonic yes. tutor imperial seal vampire tutor in any black deck you're playing these three cards doesn't matter if it's stacks or or storm you're playing those three 100%. cards i would say almost no matter what but you also get like diabolic intent boom which is another two mana one that lets you go get what you need and there's a lot of other very niche cards that people will play I mean, some like scheming cemetery i've seen be very good if you're winning right away with it what's the matter if you give your yeah. opponent a card on top of their deck um wish claw talisman actually she's playing so many decks very now. broken one thank oh, actually hmm. thank god that we're getting color artifacts now because yeah. that's that's a reason why yeah wish claw was a super huge ad and especially if you play wish claw with blue i don't know if this is something that we boost the tutor ability of blue but you can wish claw talisman give it to somebody else chain of vapor your wish claw talisman to get it back and use it again that's true True. Yeah, I'm actually considering putting tutors at four for blue. It already's got pretty good ones. You have all of the artifact tutors, which are so good. You have the mystical tutor. You have um, solve the equation. That one's lame. That one's really bad, yeah. but it was a tutor I was thinking well, of. So here's what I'm thinking about for blue on the tutors is blue has great tutors for artifacts and it has mystical tutor. That's all. It doesn't have great ways to tutor for other shit. I've been in situations where I'm in is it decks and I want to tutor for Glenhorn Buccaneer, but mm. I have no way to get to it. See, we could argue that Neoform is also blue. So that is another that tutor. That's true. Neoform Muddle is the also mixture blue. Muddle is Muddle also mixture. another that one that goes and get a specific thing. So I think tutors at four for blue is Totally I would fine. argue three. I would still argue you three. You would still argue three? Blue. Because I think green and black are both better at tutoring. But that's the only reason uh, why. Green and black are better than tutoring, but blue is so much better than white at tutoring. That's also true. How do we fucking decide? I, I'm okay with three. I'm okay with three because blue, Spellseeker is another card, but like these are all very specific things that yeah. they have to get. Like Maybe they, it should be four. They don't have flexibility in what they get. Like they yeah. can only get one specific thing instant sorcerers and artifacts yeah i guess that's green can things. only get creatures green just gets creatures really really well and a lot of them really it well it's so good though i think it i blue's doing fine without needing a four for tutors we're gonna give it three <laughs> all right and then white for tutors is the last one we want to do before we're like gonna finish one. out you black. get enlightened tutor which is very powerful but that's it i guess you get ranger captain of eos too now ranger captain of eos just comes with esper sentinel so that's well, not really yeah, like but it's still a tutor you can get it's a white card that tutors and gets other stuff i think one is fine yeah. i think one is fine for white all right so now that we embarrassingly just went back and added a whole category excellent we're gonna keep talking about black excellent and we're gonna go back to interaction black has decent interaction it has really good on the board interaction for creatures yep and it has uh pretty piss poor interaction for the stack yeah, that's kind of true. You something have Imp's that I've Mischief. Been yeah, Imp's Mischief is okay. Uh, not really great. It's not really something that is like added to your deck because you're playing black. It's like the lack of blue that requires you to play, it, and even then, it's not a good rate. Um, stuff like what's the the fierce guardianship for black? Deadly Rollick. Deadly Rollick is a great one. I've been really loving Dismember recently. I think Dismember is awesome right now. Snuff Out should probably see more play. Snuff Out is a great one. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. It kills creatures really great, but it doesn't kill artifacts basically at all. But there's one black spell that kills enchantments. But it costs two mana and you have to pay life. So it's very unsynergistic. Sorcery speed. Fuck with socks. Yeah, right. I so guess you get Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy if you're in Golgari. Ooh. Those are great removal spells. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'm I'm okay giving black a two for interaction. Yeah, I would. Yeah, because it say has two. some options, but the options you have are limited, and they can't do everything that you want. And the lack of having stack interaction is very concerning. Yeah, no, no real reasonable counter spells or anything. At least no. white has silence. It has something to do on the right, stack. Black, it, black just has targeted removal. Exactly. Now under the wind condition section. I think black also deserves a five for win conditions. Yeah, I say so. Demonic Constellation and Tainted Pact are huge additions. Also, I guess uh, maybe I want to give it a four. Maybe I want to give it a four because you do have Demonic Consultation and Tainted Pact, but that is a significantly smaller portion of the Thoracle decks that are out there. Like Thoracle can win in so many different ways that it feels weird putting really anything else on that same level i would think interesting i don't play thoracle unless i'm playing black cards you don't play thoracle unless you're playing black cards i would never i don't think i would ever play thoracle in a deck that didn't play demonic consultation and tainted pact or 
some black card to re re reanimate it. Like what, when would you ever play fast as Oracle without one of those effects? Anytime that you could like draw your whole deck and win with Oracle, you can win some other way. You have your whole deck in your hand. You don't need that Oracle anymore. Yeah, I guess that's true. I would say, and then if you count that card advantage, the ad nauseums as win conditions, which we did just like last week, that black has great win conditions. If you count ad nauseum as a win condition, which I think you do. Are we counting ad nauseum as a win condition? Well, we just talked about how it was a win condition I guess, last week. I guess that's true. <laughs> so if it, if it was a win condition last week, it's got to be a win condition now. And that means that black has great win conditions, I think. Right? That means that Ristic Study and Mystic Remora are also win conditions. No, no, no. They draw because cards they slowly. Get fed. Ad nauseum draws you cards right now. I guess you win true. right now. For some reason, I just have a I have a stupid mental block on wanting to give Black a five for this category, but it's definitely five. Um, we'll I think give it's it a five. five. We'll give it a five. Yeah, it has like the Witherbloom Chain of Smog. Oh, like, that's there's also great like one. a yeah. lot of really oh, efficient things dead effects you can on do. Worldforger and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's also true. Yeah, Black does make an appearance in a lot of combos. Okay, it gets a five, and then for stacks. Uh, Black has Dothy Voidwalker and Opposition Agent. Great stacks pieces. Yes. Truly, they go in almost any deck. They could. You could play them in five color and it'd be a reason to play Black in your five color deck are those two cards. Those that I think that should bring it up, but very shallow. That's all Black has as yeah. far as stacks. I would maybe throw that at three since it's got very potent ones, but only a couple of them. When I build a stack deck without white and it includes Black, it feels like it is very difficult to do. That's true. Yes. I feel like three is pretty high. I'm as I two think, cards. We could give it a two for two I cards. I think I'm okay with giving it a two. Okay. Because they are very powerful effects, but there's a lot of black decks that don't run them because it just also doesn't really synergize with what your deck is doing too That's much. That's true. Uh, yeah. I have seen them up across the spectrum though. I have seen them in storm decks and ad nauseum decks. I've seen them in stacks decks. I've seen them in mid range decks. I think they can play a decent role at all of them. I think their, their effects are incredibly powerful and they work very well with Timna, which I think really helps huge one. you go into that direction too. But I don't, Timna is not a stacks piece. And even though it's a good stacks commander, you're playing timna because it's a good stacks commander in white mm -hmm. and it does not really have anything to do with the black side if timna was blue you would be very happy if timna was like white green or white red you would also be very happy yeah i guess so yeah i, I think i see your point yeah all right so what what's the what's our conclusion i'm on two for stacks all right i'll take two That's fine. okay i think it maybe should be higher but all right let's move over to red okay so mana is our first category <sighs> excels it, weirdly very great normally you know in any other format i do not think this is red strong suit but we have dockside in our format and dockside is broken yeah red's red is the weird case that we talked about at the beginning of this podcast where um you know what it typically does in other formats it can't do here but what it does here is very good it still gives you explosiveness which i think is what red has always given yeah it just doesn't do that with small creatures and burn damage it does that with things like dockside extortionist exploding into 15 mana out of nowhere it does things like uh, an underworld breach after you've just been playing the game for the whole game and then you have 15 cards in your graveyard cast an underworld breach and out of nowhere you can just explode yeah. so i think it still it has wheel of fortune which you can go from zero to seven cards pretty quick yeah um, it has a bunch of ways to explode you fast ways and now as far as far as its depth on mana after dockside extortionist the list is short we got right of flame that's kind of it i mean technically orcish lumberjack is a good reason <laughs> yeah, to be in true. red green uh simian spirit guide that's is, the, good one, actually. is the other red card that you normally talk about from extra mana like that so we have ragavan now too well that's, that's true ragavan actually does a, a good job at being a red mana dork i guess it does have a decent amount w how much do you want to consider dockside with this and where what do about you wanna... face breaker that's another face one breaker works too too. you know what and there's just going to be even more red ways to make treasures yeah. down the line i think for mana we're at either a four or a five for red that's high i would go with four because yeah i would four. go with i think i would go with four that's that's tricky though because it does have dock side so that does make me want to say yeah like it's the main reason to play red is dock side extortionist yeah. mana so maybe it should have a five. Yeah. If uh, Thassa's Oracle gives win conditions for blue a five because it's the best win condition, then I would say Dockside has to give red a five as for, the best ramp for ramp for mana because yeah. it's the best mana to be doing in red. Now where are we at with card draw in red then? 
initially right off the bat i say stinky but i think that might not be as true i don't know a lot of the red card draw it doesn't see play in cdh i feel like it sees play in casual it's gotten much better in casual yeah. but the rate hasn't increased enough for it to actually be a draw for red and cdh no yet. like what do we have we like jessica's will is that's kind of yeah. that's another mana one but that's like that one. also does give you like a couple of extra cards to look at crom um crom is a good one wheel of fortune that's really the one that was- Wheel of Fortune, I would argue, is card disadvantage because you give your opponents 21 cards okay. and you only maybe like seven cards yeah, maximum. that's very true. I would say Wheel is card disadvantage, but it can still be a powerful card. I just, I don't think it's card advantage in our format, unfortunately. I mean, you know what? We should really be looking at Wheel as a combo piece and really under win condition. Yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would See, agree. See, this is a time where I'm only putting it in <laughs> one category. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so red for card draw, I think we're still at pretty poop. I would say pretty poopy, but I'm not playing red for card draw with nope. the exclusive situation that Crown is in my command zone. Yeah, which is something. So it's at least not a zero. Maybe a one. A one. I yeah, think it's fine. One. Interaction in red. Decent. I would say, well, I don't know. Deflecting SWAT's insane. Deflecting SWAT is nuts. I and then yeah. it goes very downhill after that. Red Blast and, and Pyro Blast, I think, are, I still rate them very high in a lot of decks. I think they're really strong. The more colors I'm playing, the less copies of that effect I want. That is also true. So I will normally end at one copy of the Red Blast options yeah. in my deck. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. Um, Lightning Bolt, I think, is playable. Um, there, I saw recently a Galavantic Blast get cast, and I thought that one actually seems pretty good since it kills Winota and Chrom if you needed to. And if in the right deck, it's always going to be on. Um, uh, but, but really, as it's, far it's as like that, outside of that, swat. yeah, Deflecting yeah. Swat's the main thing. Stuff like Chaos Warp is too slow for the format. Stuff like Wild Magic Surge hasn't seen enough play. That double red is kind of tricky, so that makes it kind of hard to cast. There's definitely options that you have, but none of them are really good. Yeah, I would say, yeah, this isn't what draws you to red. The interaction no. isn't what draws you to red, so I would give it like a two, probably. I think two is exactly It has what some good options. Deflecting Swat is a draw, but the line that kind of ends very quickly after that exactly now for win conditions i'm pretty comfortable just giving right a five underworld breach is insane kiki jeek is insane both sides of the format it's got win conditions layered very deep i agree with you there dark side can also be a win condition as it's oh, very 100%. easy to go infinite with yeah. too so yeah i'm def i think that's just a clear i easy. think red gives you five yeah exactly it's a main draw to the form it's now, the main draw to the color in our format is underworld breach or kiki jeek i would yeah, say yeah exactly now where do you have stacks at with red magus the moon's pretty good yeah not pretty good good playable in some decks i shouldn't say pretty good magazine moon really ain't that good anymore, i guess but yeah so you you play a lot of winota like what it's other great winota it's great when it's a surprise when it's a great when it's a surprise off of winota it's really yeah good but like what other red stacks pieces are you playing like not red humans like what other red mm, stacks let me pieces try to visualize playing? the entire list real quickly there's not a ton like no, what right? red offers you are is like winota enablers some tutors some interaction type and really things. winota because Win Win winota's red yeah i would have to look through the winota list real quick but i don't know if red really offers you a ton of stacks pieces really. there's really not much like red's win conditions are really the reason why blood pod is playing tana yeah definitely <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> Fuck yeah, man <laughs> two for stacks yeah i would say two yeah and then maybe a one is it a one there's only magus the moon right okay, yeah it's a one i can't think of anything else blood moon uh, that's even worse than Magus of the Moon. <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would say, yeah. What one. do these mono red stacks decks play? Yeah, like the Trinospheres. They play the artifacts. They play the artifacts. They play, yeah. yeah, that's true. All right, well, then let's go to Tutors then. Okay. So you have Gamble in this. You have Imperial Recruiter as well. Yep, Gamble and Imperial Recruiter. These well, I guess are, we didn't include Recruiter of the Guard in white, but. Yeah. That one's so much worse than Imperial Recruiter, though. I guess it is. Yeah, it's pretty worse. Not great, but not the worst. And is there a red top deck tutor? Gamble. It was not a top deck tutor. It's oh. Gamble is the is that cycle. I would say two. Gamble, it can be nuts in Underworld Breach decks, which is pretty good. But outside of that, it doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really bring anything great to the table. I would in say terms two. of tutors, yeah. No, I think it's that's not, fair. It's not flat non-existent. There are good options, but not few and far between. No, I agree. Um, all right, green. 
Let's go. Mana. mana. Great. Five. I would say five. Hell yeah, right? Even though mana dorks can be a touchy slow, I still think green gives you the best mana advantage. Yeah. Carpet of Flowers, I think, is still a very great card a lot of the time. There's uh, Bloom Tender, Priest of Titania, Gaia's Cradle is a huge one. Cradle Crop is massive, Crop rotation defines right? it. Like, there's ways to really explode with mana in green. Um, it's not fast like it is in black. It's a little bit slower, but it's a lot more. So I think that makes it pretty valuable still. Yeah, I definitely agree there. So I'm very comfortable giving that a five. For card draw in green. So card draw is interesting. So green does have access to Thrasios, which is like, meh. Sylvan Library is a card that, you know, we've been kind of going back and forth on a little bit more now. Other than that, what What's card the, draws the in Toski, green? What's the Toski, the four mana squirrel thing? That card's bad. Yep. Next. Uh, Oren Frostfang. Next. <laughs> There's like a couple other like th- four mana creatures. And by the time you're <laughs> okay, in. Okay, Advisory sometime. That was you should see play a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Blob. Um, Or the. What was he called? The Grob, green? I think. Grob, that's what it is. Terrible name. All of those cards stop seeing play after you hit three and more colors. That's true. So do we give it a two or a three because of that? I think that a two is fine. I no. think that's... What do you think? I was going to say two, yeah, because green doesn't really, like, right off the bat, it doesn't offer you card advantage like that's not why i lean to green i lean to green for tutors i lean to green for mana i don't lean to it for this so yeah i would say like a two i would say it's probably pretty far down there yeah when, a three would mean like I, I i want to play that color because it offers something good there's in that something category. there yeah and there's nothing really like and that green here. doesn't have that yeah um green the two would be like i'm dealing with these options that i have right and that's exactly what that is. Um, so for interaction for green. You have Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy if you're yep. playing black, right? You have Nature's Claim. You have Besaju. That's huge. Yep. I was just um, thinking did that Did we talk too. about Ottawara for blue when we talked about interaction? No, that's another but thing. It, it was going to be a five already. Yeah. yeah. Um, but besides that, not a ton. Doesn't kill creatures great. Has fight spells, which only see playing specific decks, and they're not great. Mono you know green, I mean? mono green decks. Yeah. Um, it has it has the veils. It has the veils, which is protection. That's us. That's kind of interaction. Some protection it doesn't really fuck with your opponent at all. No, doesn't do anything to your opponent basically. No. And then we ha- it has like artifact and enchantment removal, nature's claim, force of vigor, uh, stuff like that. That's pretty much endurance it. Endurance is a new one. That's a great include Ooh. for interaction. I would say. Well, you know what? Noxious revival is also technically interaction. Yes, that's very true. Um, so I would say reasonable three. I would say three. Maybe uh, there are some good options where I'm in green and I get green interaction. Like I, to me, Assassin's Trophy and or Abrupt oh, Decay yeah. are good reasons. I'm like, well, I'm in green, so I get to play these cards. Yeah, because so, I'm already playing black. Right. Like I would love to have these as removal options. So I would say three. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. there's the cards that draw you to the f- color. They're not the best thing to be doing per se. You know what I mean? You're not like going out of your way to make sure that you play green for the interaction but right. if you're building a deck in your head adding green does give you a little bit of extra boost there that's, that's good yeah i i definitely and agree there. is fucking insane besage is really really good oh yeah um and then under win conditions green has birthing pod vivian i would yeah. say one of the best besides ad nauseum yeah it's like one of the better win conditions generates they can generate win off of just one spell being cast i think that's really powerful i would say hi four like yeah i would it, say a four it also gives you a couple of the better options the combo with dockside and team or saber tooth and meal as well too um which i guess white also has as well too but doesn't offer you really anything to the underworld breach thasis oracle spectrum side of no CD. actually none of doesn't that doesn't give you anything for that but if you're not in that world of like grixis it it offers you a lot i think wither bloom apprentice with a Bloom Apprentice, yeah, that's also true. So I think Wind Conditions is probably a solid three. I would say four. I think uh, it's, you would think a four. I think it's four. I think yeah. I think is. I, I think, think that's fair. There's a there are a lot of ways that green can help you get infinite mana. So it's I very think deep. I'm definitely okay yeah. with that. For stacks, I think green is decent. Collector Oof's powerful. Collector Oof really, I think, brings most of the weight in this yeah. category here what's the one that destroys an artifact and then all other artifacts come in tap mangle horn that one's pretty good too yeah so again this is just green being really good at interacting with artifacts you also have root maze which is mm, another another one. good one yeah. right so there are a couple of them i think i think this is a fine three i would say three also yeah. it offers you some strong cards but it's not a super huge pull it's but i would say three but it, it's like oh i'm already playing this color in the stack I get, I get to play collector. i Oof. get to play this right yeah um, especially because of how much of the format relies on artifacts. Yeah, too. definitely. Um, and then when it comes to tutors, I think green really good. is really good too. I'm, I might be at a four with green just because it's only good at getting one specific 
type of card. Right, yeah, but it does it very well. Worldly Incredibly Tutor, Finale well. of Devastation, Green Sensi. There's like a ton. It goes very deep. Yeah. There are a lot of ways to get creatures Eldritch directly Evol into play. Eldritch Evolution. Um, the directly into play is huge uh, since green can do that because you don't know what's going to play before the thing resolved. That's a really huge big plus, I think. You know what? For green, we didn't talk about some of the stacks win conditions. Mm -hmm. Oh, like Kamal? Yeah, like Kamal or like Craterhoof Behemoth, I yeah. guess, technically. Those are win conditions in green. What do we give it for, for green? It has a four. I think that's still fine, yeah, though. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, surprise, bonus color. We're going to talk about colorless. Did we get through all the categories of green already? Yeah, that's all of that. Wow, that was quick. Okay, we, sure. We, we, we got a little quick there, yeah. What did we give for the tutors? Uh, four. We gave it a four for a the four. tutors. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, just because it can't get like instance and sorceries or anything like that. Yeah, let's go over colorless. What does colorless offer? Mana is a five. I would say definitely. Mana yeah. yeah. is yeah. a five. Definitely five. I'm Soul playing... Ring, Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox. Mox Diamond, this, these go in every single deck. You can argue all you want. I will not fault on this. Uh, Lotus Petal also goes in most decks. Mox yeah. Amber is a great one. Um, Jewel Lotus is, you know, obviously. All the artifact mana, that's all colorless spells. This is really where we should put yeah. the talismans. And this is strange because this isn't what colorless offers. You know what I mean? Because you can't add colorless to your deck. Your deck has the ability to be colorless also. But, it's but nonetheless, what, it's, we'll talk it's about it. what the cost of playing colorless spells as opposed to playing another effect that you get out of another color right yeah. right so like instead of playing like additional card draw or additional interaction right we're playing these as mana sources yeah makes them worthy of speaking about speaking of card draw then where are you at with colorless card draw options zero right a zero like if any category gets a zero colorless can't draw cards well yeah that's the yeah, ad it, it can't because it would break well, the game if it could colorless also can't interact well there yeah. are two colorless interactions spells and they require you to like pay half, colorless you know like half an eldrazi play or something yeah right so <laughs> we're gonna say no there we well i would say a one on interaction a one there's the one spell that counters a sorcery that i actually do think like very rare cases is almost playable so my whole my whole problem with that is that it requires colorless mana to activate as opposed to, or it, it uses colorless mana to cast, as opposed to just like you being able to pay two generic mana and it goes into the spell, like you have to have a pain land so that you can counter the sorcery. Ah, uh, yeah, but that's what, that's colorless. That's what colorless offers. Yeah, but like that's not. I'm not drawn to want to play pain lands into my deck yeah, for that's that true. reason. I should if say anything, I that brewed, makes my deck worse. Okay, you know what? You're probably right. I, you know what? So I'm thinking about. I tried to brew a colorless CDH deck one time, and I was like, oh wow, I get one piece of interaction. This is incredible. Well, you get another one because there's spatial contortion, which is one in a colorless that gives a creature plus three, minus three. I think. It's like a colorless lightning bolt. <laughs> zero. Yeah, we'll give it a zero. Yeah, yeah. Okay, zero. <laughs> Um, and then win conditions. Zero again? No. No? no. What do you no. got? It's got to be a one. Lion's Eye Diamond. It, Lion's Eye Diamond, yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's got to be a two. What do you got? Because you know what? There's a lot of other artifacts that combo with things, too. Like Magda deals with artifacts to combo. Yeah. Urza deals with artifacts to combo. Like, yeah. artifacts are just such a huge part okay. of the yeah. game. Two. Um, Dramatic Scepter okay. is like three. a combo. So, okay. Okay. We give, give it a three. And then stacks, we're going to give it a four. Four or five? Four, yeah, four probably. I think a four, right? Trinisphere, Trinisphere Winter Orb, Curse Static Totem. Orb. Yep. Uh, the tap thing. What's the tap thing? Tangle, Tangle wire. wire. Yeah. We are so saying the same thing. There is a lot the that color. This is one of the one of the strong. Besides mana, I would say stacks is the other thing that colors yeah. does really well. So yeah, a four. It's not the best. So I think white. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I think that's fair. Um, yeah. But if we get a multiple things share that five then i think it we can we have five things at five for mana great <laughs> five so things? We, no Wait, i'm what? sorry no, that can't be right <laughs> yeah. we have three things at five for, for mana. five mana should we sort three them like the should six. we like rank them in the thing since there's or no since now we're using six as a color now we so have six. six yeah so it doesn't uh, it doesn't right. what Fuck do we would have to employ zero and now this is just too hard so we're gonna put the totals next great Okay. Oh, so oh wait. Gonna... Tutors for there's zero tutors in colorless. There are uh, fetch lands are colorless. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> One. One. Okay. So the total. Should we talk about like the numbers individually? Like white has this, and like should we read them off like that? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do math while I'm reading them off? Then? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. How am I gonna do math while you read them though? Because oh, I'll say like the number as and you, you do math. All right, yeah. Do you have a calculator on your phone? I do. Yeah. I'm pretty sure all phones have calculators. <laughs> Give it to me. All right. So white has a one for mana, 
has a three for card draw, has a three for interaction, has two for win conditions, five for stacks, and one for tutors. A 15. A 15. All right. There's going to be people who are watching at home like, why the fuck do you need a calculator to add these numbers together? Guys, I'm stupid. That's why we're doing it. There's six numbers we have to put together. That's That's way too many. So many. That's more than I can do on one hand. That's twice as many numbers that I can compute. (laughs) All right. So So 15 is the final number for white. For white. Did you write that down? Yes, I did. 15, white. For Stop clicking the pen, Cam. (laughs) For blue, we have two at mana. Five for card draw, five for interaction, five for win conditions, one for stacks, and three for tutors. We got 21 on that 21. one. 21. Ooh, that's nine plus 10. Uh, Black has a four in mana, a five in card draw, a two in interaction, a five in win conditions, a two in stacks, and a five in tutors. 23. 23. Black's better than blue. I knew that was going to happen. That's why I didn't want to give uh, Black such a high rate for win conditions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Red. Red has a five in mana, a one in card draw, a two in interaction, a five in win conditions, a one in stacks, and a two in tutors. 16. Green has a five in mana, two in card draw, three in interaction, four in win conditions, three in stacks, and four in tutors. 21. 21 and then colorless has a five in mana a zero in both card draw and interaction win conditions gets a three stacks has a four and a one in tutors 13 13 wow white and colorless is actually pretty close (laughs) that's actually pretty close so white totaled 15 points which is pretty sad in comparison to most other things. Blue is at a total of 21 points. Yep. Black is our winner here at 23 total points. Best color in CEDH. Red is at 16 points, only one over white. Green is at 21 points, and then colorless is at 13. Maybe we shouldn't be shitting on green as much as we have been. Maybe the system doesn't fucking mean anything because it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. <laughs> I think we just employed some science. Thanks so much for watching or listening. If you want to support us directly, you can do so at Patreon, like our $100 patron. Demon of Rosgrees and Baby g If you want to pick up any merchandise, you can do that at the Play to Win store, which is playtowinmtg.com Thank- on the internet. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dragon Shield, for supporting the show. Make sure you go check out the affiliate link down below to check out all of their new releases that are coming up very soon. Thank you so much for watching or listening. See you next week. AJ Alwasabi. Jake Torfield. Stashes. Mitchell Shepard. Justin. Eli Richie Man Solo Nikola Marakovic Steven Schlichty Big TP15 That wing guy <laughs> Plenty Jackson Isaiah Burleski Mark Lyon Pedro Metal Plays Games Wind with See Kuwaja A. Hamid Jacob Depp CZ Michael Blue Yawn Wildfire Sleepy Jarvis Thomas Bueno Swampy McGee Orlando David Nelson Jormags James Noon 